And we are back. Welcome back to the Premier League prediction series. It is time for another three weeks of club football action, which feature four weekends of Premier League action, but also the return of European club football as well. So before we even start today, I'm going to do my usual reminder of making sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because starting on Monday will be the new Champions League predictions format with all of my Champions League predictions coming for you on Monday's video, all of my Europa League predictions coming in Tuesday's video and all of my Europa Conference League videos coming in Wednesday's video. So we're going to have three 30-minute prediction videos covering all the European football starting from this week. So if you haven't done so already, please do make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of those predictions you've got coming up for you. And of course, don't forget to drop a like on this video and any of the other videos you may be watching on this channel over the next few weeks. So let's get ready for it. We're here to talk about Premier League game week eight. But before we do so, let's round up the results from the international break. Before it, we had 10 Premier League games for game week seven. That was a five out of 10 for me with no correct scores. And in the Nations League, we got 27 out of 52 with four correct scores in the Nations League. So we did pretty well in the Nations League in the end. All in all, brings our season's results to 196 out of 343 with 18 correct scores. So we're not doing too well. We're not doing too bad. I'd like to be a little bit higher up in those percentages, but we're getting better as the season is going on. And obviously, of course, before we get into today's predictions, remember that on the community page, you can get involved yourselves by letting me know who you think is going to win all of today's 10 Premier League predictions. Because I'm telling you right now, this game week eight predictions is by far the toughest games we've had so far this season to call. Genuinely, you look at all 10 of those fixtures and you'd probably say there's only sort of really one that you'd say is an absolute guarantee. I think the rest of them really, really tough to call. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting off, as always, with the early kickoff on Saturday, it is Tottenham against West Ham. Tottenham, who ended game week seven, are now starting game week eight. And it was them who had a very good start in that final game of game week seven, going 2-0 up at half time against Brighton but then throwing it away and losing 3-2 come full time. West Ham, on the other hand, were able to get a 4-1 victory over Ipswich. And last season at Tottenham, were able to get the win. So there's going to be definitely some momentum building from West Ham's side. If they're able to beat Spurs in this fixture, they actually go above them in the league table as well. What's interesting in terms of team selection for this is it looks like that Hyunmin Son and Richarlison could both be available for Spurs, but for West Ham, Fulkrug is still injured. For me, Spurs are going to be looking for a response after that collapse against Brighton, but this is not a very easy game for them. I'm going to ear on the side of caution. I'm going to go 2-1 to Spurs, but like I say, West Ham off a good win and off of getting the result at Spurs last year are going to feel like they can definitely get something again here. On to the first of the three o'clock kickoffs, and it is Fulham taking on Aston Villa. Fulham are eighth in the Premier League table right now, just three points behind Aston Villa. And if you all remember what happened a couple of weeks ago, they had a higher XG against Manchester City at the Etihad. They only lost by one goal. And realistically, they should have won that game if it wasn't for Adama Traore missing countless chances. Villa, on the other hand, very, very poor in a goalless draw to Manchester United, which again, if we're being realistic... Manchester United probably should have won that game with the chances that they had. So Villa come into this game off the back of a poor result. Fulham come into this game off the back of a poor result, but a great performance. Another team that is a real concern in terms of injuries is Aston Villa. It looks like Onana, Concert, Ramsey and McGinn are all going to be missing from their first team. Fulham's only real injury doubt is Joachim Anderson, but I think it looks like he's going to be made available for this game. So Fulham look like they're going in with a fully fit squad. It was Villa who got the victory here last year, though. So, again, swings and roundabouts. All sort of balances itself out. I can't really split them right now. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw in this one. Second 3 o'clock game sees Ipswich Town taking on Everton. This is a battle between the 17th club in the Premier League and the 16th. Ipswich are still without a win in the Premier League so far this season, but they have had four draws. Did lose to West Ham last time out, though, as we've already mentioned, in that 4-1 defeat. Everton only have one win so far this season, but they are unbeaten in their last four. So it's been one win and three draws for Everton over the last few weeks. Dwight McNeil, obviously, the man in absolute barnstorming form at the moment. It looks like they could have Jareth Branthwaite back for this one as well. So that would be a big positive 
for them. Although it now looks like Njai could be out injured for Everton. For me, again, a really tough one to call. Very, very close. But from what I've seen of these two sides over the last few weeks, I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. I can see it being a high-scoring affair. Both teams look very dodgy defensively. And both teams are starting to score goals. So, can't split them. Could go either way. But for me, I'm going for a 2-2 draw. Then we have to talk about Manchester United once again, which I don't really want to do as a Manchester United fan, but my job is to do these predictions, so here we are. They are taking on Brentford. Now, if we're talking about Manchester United, as much as we want to talk about Ten Hag and the strategy and blah, 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 again, for the second season running, we have to talk about injuries. Sure, Malassia and Mount all could potentially return this weekend. Mainu, Garnacho, and Ahmad all pulled out of their international fixtures. Garnacho and Ahmad should be available. Mainu is out for a month. Masrawi now has heart issues and he's going to be missing for a month. Maguire's out for a month. And now Ugarte has picked up a calf injury for Uruguay and it looks like he's going to be out for a month as well. So that is a lot of key players missing for Manchester United. On top of that, no goals in their last three Premier League games. Brentford have scored in the first two minutes of their last four Premier League games and Manchester United are horrendous starters at the start of each half. And they've already conceded, I think it's five goals already this season within the first five minutes of either the first half or the second half. It is not looking good for Manchester United going into this game. The only thing in their favour is that Brentford have conceded in every Premier League game so far this season. But it was a 2-1 victory for Manchester United last season with a 93rd and 97th minute equaliser then winner from Scott McTominay. So... If I wasn't a Manchester United fan, I'd probably go for Brentford to win this game. But I am a Manchester United fan, and I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. I don't think we'll win. I really don't. With the injury problems, with how good Brentford have been this season, how poor we've been in front of goal, I think we're really going to struggle to get a result here. And I think 1-1 is, as a Manchester United fan, a realistic prediction. But you look at the form guide, you'd probably say Brentford go to Old Trafford and win. Next up, Newcastle and Brighton again. Two sides with mixed bag of form at the moment. Brighton obviously off the back of the comeback against Spurs. They're going to feel confident that they can go to St. James and get a result. Newcastle got the 0-0 draw against Everton after the 1-1 draw with Manchester City. They should have won against Everton if it wasn't for that Anthony Gordon miss from the penalty spot. Izak is going to be back for this one, so that can make a massive difference for them. Brighton are going to be without Van Hecker and João Pedro. Looks like he's still going to be out injured as well. What's the fun thing about this one is that in the last four matches for Brighton, there has been a minimum of five goals. So hopefully we're going to see something along those lines again. I am going for a five-goal game, but I'm going in favour of Newcastle, and I'm going for 3-2 to them. Final three o'clock kickoff sees the two newly promoted sides coming up against one another. It is Southampton against Leicester. Leicester finally got their first win of the season against Bournemouth in game week seven, which is still the only promoted win so far this season. Ipswich still don't have a win. Southampton still don't have a win. Leicester were the first promoted side to get a win in game week seven against Bournemouth. And what's very interesting going into this one is that in the two games in the championship last season, Leicester won 5-0 at home and Leicester won 4-1 away. So it's not looking good for Southampton. I would expect Leicester to get the result here again and I'm going to go for 3-1. But if it's going to be Southampton's day, it needs to come here. If they're going to have any chance of doing anything this season, they've got to be winning games at home to Leicester. But I just don't see it happening. I'm going for 3-1 to Leicester City. The final game on Saturday is the late kickoff between Bournemouth and Arsenal. And again, I've got to be honest, this is a game that I think is really tough to call. Bournemouth have played well so far this season, but haven't been quite getting the results. And like we spoke about with Manchester United, Arsenal are piling up with injuries right now. As things stand, Saka is doubtful. Timber is doubtful. White is doubtful. Havertz is doubtful. Odegaard's out. Martinelli's out. Partey's out and Zinchenko's out. So again, you're looking at seven or eight players that would definitely start for Arsenal if they were available. So huge injury problems for them. The only other thing going into it is that last year, the sides met twice, obviously, in the Premier League. It was 4-0 to Arsenal at home. It was 3-0 to Arsenal away. No goals conceded. They're very, very good defensively away from home. 
Bournemouth obviously just lost 1-0 to Leicester. So even with the injury concerns, I'm still going to go for Arsenal, but I'm only going to go for a 2-0 result for them. That then brings us on to Sunday, and the opening game on Sunday sees Wolves taking on Manchester City. Wolves sit absolute rock bottom of the Premier League table. They have lost all of their last four Premier League matches. They have also got injuries to some of their first team players, but not many. The probably biggest one at the moment is Huang Hee Chan. Manchester City, on the other hand, are unbeaten so far this season. They're one point off top. They are absolutely flying, as always. Their only major injury concern, obviously, Rodri out for the season. De Bruyne could be potentially back for this one, but even if he's not, they've still got Bernardo Silva, Foden, Gundogan, Savinio, Doku, Grealish, etc., etc., etc. What I would say, and this is the only potential caveat going into this match, is that Wolves won this game last year, and this was Manchester City's first defeat of the season last season. So there is an opportunity for Wolves to repeat that feat. It was an absolute Ballon Dawson masterclass on Erling Haaland in that fixture last year. But then later on in the season when they played at the Etihad City 1-5-1. So they put that result right. Wolves are playing awful this season. City are playing very well. I can only really go for a Manchester City win. And I'm going to go for 4-1. I'm still going to give Wolves a goal. I always back Wolves to get a goal. But Manchester City at the moment, they should really blow Wolves away. And that then brings us to the main event of the weekend at Anfield. It is Liverpool taking on Chelsea first versus fourth. Both teams have only lost one game so far this season. So both sides are going to be pretty confident going into this. They've actually played three times last season across multiple competitions. And on those occasions, it was two wins for Liverpool and it was one draw at Stamford Bridge. The actual game that was played at Anfield, though, was a 4-1 victory to Liverpool. Obviously, both of these sides now have new management, so how much you can read into that is very tough to say. The only other thing that I would say going into this is both Cucurella and Fafana are suspended for Chelsea because after seven game weeks, they've both picked up five yellow cards already, which is crazy. And then for Liverpool, their only real concern is that Alisson could still be out injured Although there's a lot of reports saying that he faked his injury just to get out of playing for Brazil and he could be back for this game. Ultimately, I just think this is going to be a really entertaining game. I can see there being a fair few goals. I don't think it's going to go crazy. I very, very nearly went for a 4-2 to Liverpool. But I'm going to be a little bit more conservative and I'm just going to go for 3-1. I would expect Liverpool to win, but ultimately could go either way. And I just want to see a really entertaining game from this because I think it can be. And then finally, the last game of the weekend, the Monday night football rakes its return this week. And it is Nottingham Forest taking on Crystal Palace. Palace still 18th in the relegation zone and without a win in the Premier League so far this season. Forest are in 10th, but their momentum has stalled a little over the last few games. They've had some tough fixtures, don't get me wrong, but they've made a really positive start to the season. Like I say, they sit in 10th place in the Premier League table. They've definitely got more momentum going into this one than what Crystal Palace do. The only thing I would say is that when these two sides met last year, on both occasions, they were draws. One was 0-0, one was 1-1. But since then, I think Forest are playing better and Palace are playing worse and Forest are at home. So I'm going to go for the Forest win and I'm going to go for 2-0 to Nottingham Forest to round off my predictions for game week eight. As I've already said, don't forget to check out the community page where you can make your predictions on all 10 of these Premier League fixtures. And don't forget to let me know down in the comment section below what you think is going to be happening across all the football this weekend. Thank you very much for watching as always. Thank you very much for listening as always. I'll be back with my reaction to Manchester United against Brentford. However, that goes tomorrow. And then, of course, Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League videos coming for you Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Thank you very much for watching once again. I'll see you very soon.